Welcome to part 5 of this low-budget classic motorcycle restoration series. So far we've got a rolling chassis and built the engine and clutch up most of the way. If you're new here and like this sort of thing, we recommend you go back and start at part 1. As a reminder, our whole goal with the Everyday Bike Project is to spend as little money as possible to get a great running bike back on the road, to ride and have fun on all year round. Today we're assembling more of the casings and clutch then we'll drift out the worn valve guides and replace them with brand new ones. Let's get started. When we get to this stage with the engine, I meant to mention last time, the gear cassette's gone back in. It's a good idea to make sure you get all four gears. Now, by any chance, something's not right, it jams up. You've got to take the whole thing apart. With cassette build-up gearboxes, usually the whole lot goes in. It's, it's as it should be. It's when you build up normally with um, a gearbox that's on a pre-unit you've got to put all the internals inside as you go and that's when you know sometimes you can miss your gears something's going to drift because you have to time it all up but this is quite straightforward i've just taken the selector fork out so this is the selector plate so what we can do mainly is push this down now at the moment i'm pushing the sprocket round it's in neutral at the moment if you press down on here now that should be first gear so it's locked up into first it's a little bit stiff and we just get our fingers behind it. That's back into neutral. That should be second gear. That should be third. And that's top. Go back down the box. Third. Second. Back into neutral. So it's always pays to do that. It's a little bit difficult running through the gears, obviously pressing the, the um, selector cam plate down and bringing it back up. Because when you actually change gear of your foot, this is the selector fork and this has the lever on the end. This is engaged through here. And it, what it does, it's obviously when you make the downward movement, it's pushing this down, then it neutralizes. So you've got leverage on it. But this is what this is. This is your selector fork. So today what we're going to do is just clean this surface off. We're just going to use our favourite well seal with the gasket. This is just a bit of brake cleaner. Just get rid of any greasy residue. You have to be a bit careful when you put this on because it's runny. And because we've got the engine up right now, it can drip down. So you don't want too much of this. We haven't got the dowels on this side that's on the the other casing, but it's okay. We'll soon have that on, that can line up still. Something I didn't show you earlier was the push rod. Always use a bit of grease on this and push this home, okay? That goes right in. Now on the other end of this push rod is a little ball and it's held in a little stub housing which will push that push rod up against the clutch to free the clutch off. The idea of the ball bearing is so that the shaft itself, if it rotates, it can spin on the ball. Okay, nothing's going to seize up in there with plenty of grease. This is a kickstart mechanism here. We've got a spring on the other side that's pre tensioned. We've put a new oil seal in the back of this idler gear, and that this idler gear, the seal was at the back, and at the front here we have the, what would normally be a points assembly, but we have electronic ignition on this. So we can get this back in today. We can't put the outer case on, but we can put the module back in and you'll see how it's coming together. When you do this, a mascara brush is brilliant. We've now got um, the well seal around there, gaskets on. So what we need to do is just make sure we've got, with the intermediate gear, we'll put some oil on here because this goes through a bush in this casing and there's an oil seal at the other side. I won't put too much on there because it'll drip down onto the gasket. Kickstart ratchet mechanism. We'll put some oil around that. Now I just want to show you the other side because we've got the, the seal. Always make sure that the seal has got oil inside the lip. Okay, now we're ready to put that on. We just make sure that holes are all lined up. It's 
selector forks in the right position. And now we can push this case back on. Try and push your case on nice and square. Just give it a little tap. Now what we might just do is just move that Kickstarter. Well, that's our case back on. This here, where it's got um, it clipped for a wire, that is for our ignition system. But we can put the, all these screws back up now and pull those in tight. We just go around, pull them up, then we nip them up properly at the end. Doesn't matter which way you do these. Literally just, just wind them in. But then we start from the inside working out. When I put the barrel on, I was working from the outside round, but when you come to tight, you always start from the, the center and work outwards, but we're just getting these screws in first. Also making sure that the screws are the correct ones where the, the actual thread is going right in and the screw is pulling down into the case. Right, I'm gonna pull these screws up tight now. If your screwdriver is like this one, a bit shiny, it slips in your hand, your hands already, put a glove on. You can hold on to it a bit better. Put both hands on. Give it a good pull up. We're just going to run out, right around the outside now, just make sure they're all tight. Surprisingly, you can always just get a bit more each time you go around. Right, that's nice and tight. Um, I mentioned just now about oil seals and things. You always put quite a bit of oil around the lip of a seal, so when the shaft goes through, it, um, it's sitting on the seal properly. I'm just going to make sure that that lip is in there properly with a tiny little screwdriver. Now what happened here, and it can happen, is the lip has got pushed over. So just got to be very careful and go around. Okay, you've got to be careful with that seal. I'm just going to run around that lip that's fine now. Always make sure that's in properly. When installing this case, if you have the service tool, this is not quite the right one, but this is the principle. It's a taper that goes into this intermediate gear. It screws into the centre where the points assembly were screwing to. So if you can imagine we're, we're pushing this case on with the seal, what it would do, this is not quite the same taper, it would go in there and it would expand the lip of the seal so it would ease it over onto the main pinion rather than what's happened to us we just caught the lip a little bit and it rolled over but it's in there now it's fine now i've got the case back on and screws all done up tight you can see this um, clutch operating mechanism literally on this cantilever here it's literally pulled by the cable this side pushes the push rod assembly back in and if I put pressure on there you can see the clutch moving on the other side. So if I push this in and that will be pushing the pressure plate off on the other side. I'm just going to clean up around the case now on the outside because the well seal is a bit sticky and there's a certain amount squashed out. Right, cylinder head, we're ready now to to take out the valve guides. So I've cleaned it all up, got as much of the oil out as possible, and I've decarbonized all the ports as much as I can. It's not a bad head. The valve seats, I have just tied up a little bit, but we'll finish off the cutting on those when we get the new guides and valves in. 
but we're going to heat that now in the oven. While that's heating up, we can uh, just finish off the um, extracting tool, which I'm going to use to drift out these guides. Really want it maximum heat, really, so that's right up as high as it will go. We'll put that in for, what, 10 minutes, and that should heat that up enough so we can get those guides out. Right, I think I showed you we was going to use a extracting tool, a drift, to put into the old valve guides to knock them out. Well, the tool I showed you was the wrong size. I'm just turning it down now. I've nearly finished it. So here's a new guide. I just had to make sure that um, the internal dimension is the same on this drift. So when we start to knock out, it goes through into the head and it's not going to get stuck in the head or be oversized and won't go in or hit it too hard. This hasn't got to be too accurate. We're going to run this down to about 12 mil. We'll take another cut now on this. We're over 13 on here. So we'll just give this another go. Yeah, we want to come down a little bit more on that. The idea is that it's quite a nice fit in there and that now is ready to go. It feels pretty hot to me. These have to drift from the inside out. Right. Just make sure the head's supported. And turn it on that way so the camera can see. Sometimes you can get a few marks. I think the trouble is when the guides are knocked out, there's quite a lot of debris on the expansion chamber side of the head. And it drags up through the aluminium a little bit. Here, halfway down here in the head, you can see a little bit of a lip. This is where the, the guide is just pushing the alley up a little bit. We're just gonna ease that out a little bit. So when you drift the new guys, they don't start pushing on the aluminium there and pushing in deeper. This one isn't too bad actually, but we've done the others. So what we need to do is just put this back in the oven, get it a little bit hotter than this again, and put the new guides in. Here you see the old guide which we've pressed out. We've pressed all four out, we've punched them out. And the idea is that the, the tool itself mimics the valve stem that goes well into the valve guide. Then it just literally butts up onto the, the bottom of the valve guide and it's drifted out. But during the drifting, you do get a little bit of distortion. It does take a bit of punishment. But so the old guys are knocked out. New ones, put around the other way, drifted in from the top. So what we do, we just literally just spray this up with a little bit of WD-40 and we just drift these in. It's important to get it lined up. It's a bit of a taper. So you need to get your angle right and go straight in with it. But hopefully they shouldn't be too difficult to put in. I'm going to show you one of the old valve guides with one of the valves. We have here the inlet valve. And you can see how much wobble there is. If you look at this here, a close up shot, you can see how much that valve was wobbling about. To comparison, take a new valve, take a new guide. And this is before it's installed into the head. So there has been interference fit, but there is no movement. Spray up the guide with WD-40 or equivalent. do is fairly quickly because we don't want to lose the heat. Mm. 
Right, the main thing is to get your guide central, get inserting tool, hold on to it. Now when it's home, the sound will change. You get a ping. There we have all our guides back in place. When we was drifting these valve guides back in with the tool, it's quite easy to squash in the last little bit here, the lip. Now, if I put that valve in, you'll find it a run up to that lip, it won't go through. So I'm just with a modeling file, it's very fine. I'm just literally gonna just ream that out, take that out, take that lip off. Go right round. Don't go right down, so you don't take like a taper cut really. We'll blow it all out of an airline in a minute. We do all four because I know they're all going to be the same. But it's so important to get the hot the head really hot, so an oven is really the best way. With blow lamp, you won't get the whole thing hot enough. You'll just get a localised heat in one area. So if you've got an old oven, it works really well. Or barbecue. Okay, we're just going to make sure that the guide now is opened up properly. We can use one valve for all four here. Now, now you can see it comes through nicely. Now, the difference now, we haven't got any movement now. So we're going to have to, we're just going to make sure these valves are cut properly. Then we'll lap the valves into the seats. Let's check this one. It goes right through okay. The two exhaust ones. All done. This job, it's, it's one of those jobs that can go wrong. Um, because you stick it in the oven, you've got to get it really hot, so you expand the aluminium. But when you come to putting a new guide, I've got an old one here, you've got to make sure that you've got to do it fairly quickly. That's got to be inserted. It's got a taper, but you've got to get the angle right. So you put a little bit of lube on there. Then when you put your tool through there, you're trying to do this when it's all really hot. You've got four to do, so you're a little bit pressured. So when it's lined up, you're going to start drifting with your hammer. You've got to make sure that you drift it in squarely. If that run off on an angle, it would start lifting the aluminium. It would put a burr or a lip on the inside of the head. You end up that scenario where it could start gorging into the aluminium and then you keep banging away. You start spreading the load here, expanding this, distorting this, cracking ahead. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a job you've got to do right. You've got to get it right. It just, Make sure you've got that really hot enough first. The hotter the better, because they won't have to drift it quite so hard. But yeah, once they're in, but always use a bit of brass. Don't do it with steel, use brass. You won't do any damage with that. And it is necessary just to take the lip out at the end sometimes. It won't collapse it very much. You can just see it had a little bit of a, a pinch, but we managed to just file that away. So yeah, that's, that's all done, it's good.